Welcome back to Nothing But Butts, The Untold Story. Um, so, uh, so it sounds like Sarah was there, which we can maybe, uh, we'll bring you into this conversation later. Uh, you can, you can reflect on your personal experience once we get in. Yeah. But, um, so, uh, I think we should start with kind of, um, like, why did we make it? Well, and well, yeah. So, okay. So, so it's definitely this trolley movie, but yes. just to explain where and why, um, there was this, and we're going to leave some names out. I'll just pre- presuppose this. We're going to leave some names out because I really, the I don't want to disparage yeah. it's like people putting together a screening. It's hard. It's pretty thankless. Um, like it's, it's no, it's no, it's no beef with anyone. And, and certainly there's no hard feelings. I hope everyone thinks it's funny now. Innocent bystanders. But, um, yeah. But, uh, uh, which all this will become clear later. But, uh, but, but I'll try to be honest about maybe how we were feeling about it, which was probably also immature. And if I could do it again, I would not act this way. Um, okay. <laughs> so not to excuse my own behavior or act like, oh, I'm so great. And everyone else around me is a, a humorless uh, moron. But uh, that's going to be part of the story a little bit. Okay. So, um, so there was this thing at CineFamily. Um, called animation breakdown which we mentioned earlier uh that was doing these animation screens that were that were really great um in los angeles and uh like it was some of the first time i'd really screened my work in a theater it was early enough on in my like kind of animation mm-hmm. life um 2014 so they were yeah 2014 so they were doing <laughs> 2014 so they were doing this um they were doing this weekend uh, festival where they were screening a bunch of stuff. They were screening like Son of the White Mare. We were just re- looking back at the at the, at the uh, screening list. And I was doing another event on Sunday. It was the first time I was doing this screening of Newgrounds shorts and Tom Fulp was coming out. So I was really excited. So, so just to preface this, this joke, there were other parts of this that I was taking very seriously um, and, and, you know, doing for free and for fun. So we got an email, uh, or I guess I got an email Mm -hmm. reaching out for, you were already screening a different film. You were screening your film Winter House in the same screening. Yeah. Um, And so I got a film. So the screening was called Free For All. And it was like on the Thursday and it was different than the other. They had these roundup screenings, but then they had a section called Free For All where they were reaching out to artists and animators and like commissioning them to do a new piece um, for free for this event, Mm -hmm. right? And so I think there was probably a feeling like, like that's a little bit exploitive, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, you could tell me how you've, I mean, I think it so depends on the context that it's like, it's offering a platform, which I think is great, but I think it's also tricky to, to, charge for ticket sales with a bunch of free work that you commission from animators who are desperate to, to, to show their work on the big screen, yeah. you know, whatever you can argue about whether or not that's ethical. Um, cause I, certainly there are many occasions where it, it, I, I think those kinds of things are the best thing ever. Yeah. Um, but at first I was like, no, I'm not going to make uh, a new thing. But then, uh, I had an idea for just like a kind of joke that you could execute really simply that was sort of not really animation, but also was animation at the same time and was a joke. So, uh, so I have the email that I wrote to you that I can read. Mm -hmm. So after other stuff, I say, the idea is that we make a movie called nothing but butts by Charles Hutner. And we see the opening titles of the movie, a tease of some, butt, and then the (laughs) video player gets fucked up and starts kind of hanging and, and skipping. I can simulate this pretty accurately. It happens during animation screenings all the time. I'm hoping that the movie is in the middle of the screening so we get some good groans when it keeps sticking. Then we see the projectionist quit full screen and what follows is literally five minutes of the person trying to get the video playing again. At the end of five minutes, the projectionist finally gets it running and we see the end credits of Nothing But Butts by Charles Hutner. The real joke is that this never actually reveals itself to be a joke 
it would be made to look exactly like a projectionist trying to figure out what to do. I think there could definitely be funny jokes with esoteric video programs, but nothing too obvious. It would be like an Andy Kaufman joke. What do you think? A joke worth making? <laughs> and I feel like that sentiment, a joke worth making, mm -hmm. is like 90% of my life. Yeah. And <laughs> um, I mean, at this point, I think it's also important to mention that the animation scene at the time loved this kind of stuff. You know, I think it, a part of it, yeah. part of the desire to make this film came from a frustration that like a lot of festivals and stuff like that, like most of the content was just like very like sick and twisted was sort of like the brand of yes. this kind of or, thing. Or I would say like stoner fodder. And I think that that was definitely a vibe at, at yeah. I mean, that was a vibe at CineFamily in general. It was definitely yeah. kind of a, not like, that that's bad or anything. Stoner. Yeah, not that that's no, bad or anything, it, but it was kind of like dominant at the time. And we were yeah, just sort of like frustrated. Also, and I think that um, if you if you were interested in making adult animation, it was like you either were Pixar or you were like Adult Swim, Stoner Humor. Yeah. And there was nothing in between. And I felt like any work that was in between. Okay, so I'll also say, this is jumping out a little bit, but uh, well, first of all, you responded to my email saying, this is the quote, ha ha, yeah, man, let's do this. <laughs> uh but, and, and I'll say that I had this experience before where I had um, shown my previous film, Hopkins and Delaney LLP, at an animation breakdown screening. And, like, again, nothing against the, the curators. Like, I was really psyched. It was, it was a great program, I thought. Yeah. But it felt like it was, like, the audience just really received this film badly. It felt like it was, like, the room was just so keyed up for, like, immature humor. Mm-hmm. And this movie was like, just like a splash of cold water. Yeah. I think people were literally just like, like so much of the audience was literally stoned. And then this like office movie comes on that is kind of a bummer. It has like a guy like throwing up on the yeah. ground. It was so, people were literally coming up to me afterwards going like, dude, your movie was like awful to watch. And I was like, <laughs> oh, cool. Thanks. So I do think I had a little bit of a chip on my shoulder. Yeah. And in that screening where I showed Hopkins and Delaney, they screened it in... SD because earlier in the program there was a projector problem and it's like this this always happens with digital projection it's like if a white is too white it it makes the projector shit out yeah so this kind of shit is always happening so which is important later that it's like this is not a cine family problem this is a this is an everywhere problem yeah um and so I think those two things you know, definitely started to kind of build the joke in my head of like, yeah, like, let's give like just a lowest common denominator exactly what the crowd <laughs> wants of just the fucking stupidest movie. Mm -hmm. And then subvert that with this trolley kind of joke about the projectionist, which if you've been in that theater, you can probably play as being totally real because it's happened before. Mm -hmm. um, like, I, it's like recreating the thing I've literally seen happen before. But again, it is a free for all screening, so I'm like, you ask for free for all, like, don't <laughs> don't be sad, like, yeah, don't be sad when you get a, a, a joke that you don't like. Um, so let's back up even even more. Okay. Um, that at the time, I mean, I don't know what you were up to when this was happening, um, but I also felt like I was really fr I, it was like I just graduated from school. I had a full time job animating stuff that wasn't mine yeah and i felt like i just had a lot of pent up like kind of angry creative energy maybe just because i felt like it was like i didn't have a big film to my like i just didn't have anything i felt like i was just like starting from the bottom mm -hmm. um i felt really frustrated and like i was starting to work on love streams and um uh it just was wasn't going well so i felt like it was like quick execution fuck you jokes yeah. um were, were very much my uh like something i was interested in doing um just because that energy had to go somewhere yeah basically. i think i was more more in like a calm place i think I, I had some some decent like freelance stuff going on and and um i had just met joe at the time i think and we had started working together on 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 um on a little film uh literally as, yeah like literally as we were emailing about this and stuff like that so uh-huh but yeah i mean for me it was mostly just sort of like seeing what how well like the state of of sort of like 
and what animation was, you know, and I was just like, even though I wasn't going to festivals or anything like that, I was still very much aware of like the sort of mood because I think I, I do think at the time I had a little bit of a chip on my shoulder in terms of like when people when you tell people that, oh, what I do for a living, oh, I'm an animator or whatever. And they would always say like, oh, I saw the latest Pixar movie. It's pretty good, you know, <laughs> and it's like, well, I don't do that, you know, right. so it just sort of like fighting against this, this like automatic perception that you like are you know oh you're an animator you might like I, I liked tiny tunes when i was a kid or something you know but yeah or the or that all animation has to be like yeah i think my biggest gripe was that all adult animation has to be in this sick and twisted mode mm-hmm. just that felt like just a carryover from like probably literally like the sick and twisted spike and mike stuff yeah which is fine but i feel like it's like you can't imagine an alternative and yeah. to me i felt like it was like when you show work that isn't like that in this especially in Los Angeles where it felt like that was such a predominant thing Mm -hmm. when you showed work that wasn't part of that it felt awful I mean it just felt like you were like oh I just don't have a place like I just I'm not going to fit in anywhere yeah um because it's just like I'm just not interested in doing this kind of you know Mm -hmm. um stuff I just don't find it very funny um whatever um but I would also say so now we should show some stuff so okay before this joke got made we were, I was already sort of doing like um, some, some stuff like in the film Hopkins and Delaney, I had this like simulated computer desktop stuff. Mm-hmm. So I think that was like starting to emerge as a thing that I was like into. Um, and, and then in another screening at the, at the film club that uh, I helped run, I had done this other joke where it looked like the video quit out and showed the person's laptop and there was like tentacle porn on the laptop. I can't oh, yeah. show that here. I but remember that. That was, yeah, I was like, I was like, I love that kind of joke, like a mid screening break joke. Yeah. So it's not like, like this, it's like that was already like a joke that was percolating. So yeah. maybe we could show a little bit of this sliding intro and I can okay. explain what they're And we is. can even talk over it a little bit because the, uh, the audio. Yeah, is no, we should, we should talk over it. I don't even think there's, I, we don't, yeah, you don't even need to hear the audio. Okay. Hold and on. Rachel, Rachel's in the chat now, so she chime in but basically i'll explain that rachel um who's in the room with me here she has this performance called uh called sliding uh which is a mocap performance and uh maybe someone rachel actually you can maybe drop it in chat so she had this thing and so when she would do it live uh for the first time she had done it live uh i had done a um uh, a little countdown which is this vlc video so the second time we did it live we wanted to do this this idea that there's like a sliding program mm-hmm. that kind of has an icon like Photoshop and you'd see it like fake booting up with these, you know, joking, you know, building anticipation. You know, there was sort of this joke about preheating oven. Yeah. Um, joke about the thing. And uh, so Rachel designed this like splash screen of sliding booting up. Um, as this countdown is happening, it's a good and it's a good splash screen. Like it looks like legit. It looks legit. Yeah, yeah. Rachel is a good designer, and that'll come in later. But um, uh, and so it's all these jokes that are like inside jokes. And basically, I think people didn't really even think it was a joke. It was mm-hmm. like real enough that like it didn't immediately occur as a joke. Rachel, can you post maybe the link to 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 the full sliding performance just so people can see it? Which is tight. So, but. I had that built already. Yeah. And then I'll also say that this joke was basically stolen from um, uh, our friend Peter Javidpour, who I think is in the chat, um, who we didn't know very well. I was actually, I think we maybe hadn't even met in person yet, but we had like, like we had mutual friends and we were sort of, I think I had sent him an email just saying how <laughs> funny I thought his, his stuff was. Mm-hmm. So um, maybe we can show, I wanted to just show this whole movie this five minute film because i think it's it's so funny from peter has this uh this vlog series called my world yeah uh and then my world hd so this is my world hd episode seven um which i would recommend maybe actually peter if you want to post well someone can post the link you can find it on youtube um but we're going to show it right we're going to show episode seven but i'd recommend watching all of them because i feel like they all have these kind of like meta vlog jokes it's all about like hyping up a thing that's never going to happen I just think it's really funny. Yeah. So very, very much up my uh, alley. And so, so okay. now here's. I'm going to mute us and then I'll hit play on the thing. Okay, cool. Okay, now we're back. Okay, we're back. Um, so, uh, so I'd seen that maybe like, maybe like, like a month or two before the uh-huh. screening. So 
So, okay, so we're jumping forward now, um, and we're working on the movie. Um, and, uh, yeah, thanks, Peter, by the way, for, for yes. letting us show that. Yes. I, it's one of my favorite. It's so goddamn funny. Very funny. Um, um, and so check it out. Definitely uh, My World HD, Peter Javaport. He's got another Mrs. Doubtfire recut video. Anyway, okay, so... <laughs> Uh, so, which, uh, okay, so where are we? Okay, so then we sent an email to one, to one of the organizers, mm -hmm. and at this point, we're just saying, we're making this film, sort of, but we're just saying, <laughs> Charles and I are collaborating on a new film for the screening, and uh, they said, looking forward to seeing this collaboration of the century. Uh-oh. So, um, so... There's anticipation building maybe on the other end. Uh, I pulled this on. I was looking at the thread earlier between Char the Nothing But Butts email thread as we were making the movie. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a little nugget in the middle that Charles found where I said, dude, I just had an idea for the video that is going to get me internet famous. And it's got, you've got mail related. We'll pitch you later. My head is exploding. <laughs> Which I did end up making later, uh, a you've got mail video and started this other YouTube channel. And I feel like this is where this energy ended up going. Yeah. Like the prank energy is still there. The prank energy been... is still alive in Sean and it lives in this alternate YouTube channel. But it's bit since this video ended up going the way it went, it's diverted into a kind of anonymous account just yeah. so uh, I can distance myself slightly because it's maybe a bad look to, to you know, yeah. shit where you eat, as they <laughs> say. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'll let you read this part because this is you emailing with the organizer when the film was done and we sent it. Do you have the uh, doc? I can read uh, it too. But... Yeah, you can read it because I don't have it open. Okay. Or I do, but um, I'm not. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so we sent the film in, you know, and and, and explained, you know, this this is what we're doing for the free-for-all. So they can watch it and they, they, they get the joke. So they responded and said, got it. Whoa, you're not kidding. I, I don't know what you said, but like, I hope you dig it. You yeah. Know, or, or this is a little bit weird, maybe not what you expect. Got it. Whoa, you're not kidding. There will be puzzlement. Maybe some anger even. Ha ha. I just have to alert the projectionist. I'm curious if people will quote unquote get it there with so many filmmakers slash tech savvy types attending. I think the real player reference really seals the deal, but I have a feeling that a lot of folks won't know that it's all fake. And I'll say, oh, so this is the modern version of the film getting caught in the projector and burning a hole in the frame, which yes, I think that's actually a really great point, like that it is basically that joke. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's kind of the most, it's basically the same joke too as Andy Kaufman where he put in TV fuzz into his show so that people would get up and try to adjust their antenna, right. you know? Yeah. And it's like sort of a dumb joke, but it's also like kind of an awesome joke. And I thought, and nothing but buts, we'll show it again at the end, but there is um, uh, this joke where the real player splash page comes up which Rachel designed and it's, I guess it's a, it's a testament to Rachel's design abilities that it does look pretty real. But mm -hmm. I think if you thought about it for a second, you would just be like, this makes no sense. Yeah. Is... I was going to ask you that actually that was, that's my question of mine. Did you, when you were making this, were you purposefully reaching for the oldest kind of like yes. software and aesthetic that you could? Because well, yeah, even, even back then, like having windows, what is it? Windows XP? <laughs> <laughs> would have been outdated you know right yeah we didn't talk about that yeah but in the actual thing there's so much there's so much spyware on the desktop <laughs> too yeah i don't know why it's all dated to like 2003 that it's like there's diablo 2 and, and yeah yeah gator e-wallet when we play it again you can pick up on all the details lime wire is on yeah. the desktop i don't know why i thought that'd be funny that it's just like they i think the joke was just that they have like an ancient computer system yeah. playing all this stuff and that, like, uh, yeah, and that real it's, player. It's not only might... Windows XP, but it's Windows XP in safe mode, I think. <laughs> yeah, it looks like <laughs> shit. It looks fucked. But also that um, I think that, like, there was also this joke that, uh, yeah, real player. I mean, by 2014, first of all, not only is it real player, it's like the most ancient version. Of, it's like the <laughs> real player that you'd have in 1999 yeah. to, like, live stream Incubus music videos at, like, 40p, yeah. you know. So I thought this is such an obvious tell. Mm, uh, okay. But um, uh, apparently not. So we finished the film. So at this point, the film is finished. Yes. And, uh, and I sent Charles an email saying, 
Friends are asking me for the link. Extended concept of sending a private video link where the Vimeo link where the password never works. <laughs> Trolling the whole way. Every yeah, every single time I've ever brought up releasing this or whatever, you've always sort of like, but how can we troll release it? You never wanted yeah, to just release it. You wanted I to was like... even I was even pitching that we were gonna keep the joke going in this Twitch stream and make it look like the stream lagged. Yeah. And that nobody saw it. Which <laughs> would have been pretty funny. Would have been very funny if we hyped this up and did that and kept yeah. the joke going. And we went, ah, shit, well, I got to go. I'm out of time. Yeah. Maybe we'll screen it again later. <laughs> and it <laughs> remains this, this this jokey mystery. I'm very, I hope I do that until I die. <laughs> I have some joke going. Um, uh, but it, this starts the idea that I really, I, I was really excited about the the possibilities of the extended universe of this film. Mm -hmm. That you would, you would keep this joke going for as, as long as possible. I was already thinking about that because I felt like I thought this film was so funny. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you responded to that, the Vimeo link where the password never works. You responded, ha ha, a film you can never see, but is always hyped. The perfect joke on the film world. I think that's the <laughs> other thing is I want to just have like the idea just that it would like you can script everyone to talk about it. Yeah. Like there are your friends who have seen the joke would start to act like they've seen the movie and that it's just unbelievably good. Yeah. You know, and that's how um, it, that's how it kind of was for a while, actually, like. You know, but by, yeah. by 2014, it was getting a lot better. But for a while, it was sort of like films that would sort of like, you know, win all these awards and stuff like that and all this praise and everything. And and different animation websites would be like the best film I saw this year was or the best short film I saw this year was such and such. But then you right. would never and get Annecy. to see it. You'd never get yeah. to see it unless you yeah. actually went to a theater. Right. Right. And yeah. So it was like a joke about that, too, which I still think is, I mean, frankly, kind of funny. Yeah. Um. The idea of the inside joke. Okay, so it's the actual night. And uh, because I wanted to show you what it was like, I had a prediction that there would just be like like groans and laughter. Mm -hmm. I think I say that in the original email. Like the idea of the freeze, everyone in the audience always goes, oh. And so I filmed it, I filmed it when it was happening so I could send it to you. Yeah. And we have that film, so. Yeah, we have the reaction. I, I'm going to play the whole thing, but I think only a, a little bit of of it in the beginning you can maybe turn the audio down. yeah i'm going to turn the audio down and then we can talk over it because it's just the film again it's you know? just yeah 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 okay um it might be a little bit loud so fair warning but i'll try to turn it down a little bit as soon as it's on whoops <sighs> and i'm going to leave us unmuted sean okay i want to talk <laughs> <laughs> Now I'm gonna lower the volume, because okay. it's basically that's that's basically what you need. What you, you get the you idea. Need to see. You, get, you the get the idea. idea. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm also filming this like a complete creep. <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's like weirdly low. Yeah, you're um, just like look peeping through people's shoulders. Yeah. Love it. Well, and so my memory on the night is yeah. that. Oh, okay. Well, actually, so this is better. So at 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 one a.m. I emailed you the night that it screened. Uh huh. And I was talking about it a little bit, and I actually forgot this detail till I read it, that earlier in the screening, when Charles's other film was playing, Winter House, the, the uh, projector actually did hit the exact same error and stalled out and had that exact same thing. Mm -hmm. And so, <laughs> so this is how I relayed that to you and, 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 uh, and described the night. Yeah. So then... The Lord smiled down upon us because when Winter House came on, it, I shit you not, actually glitched in literally the exact same way as Nothing But Butts. Uh, and they had to restart the projector and then restart the film. When that happened, I was so giddy because it got the full groan and full cheer when it came back on. So I knew, like, okay, this audience is, is keyed up for this. 
So then Nothing But Butts came on, and when that first image of the butt with the horns came up, everyone was laughing. A dude literally said, I'm going to love this. Um, <laughs> like, just eating it up. And then when the first glitch happened, there was a huge groan. So by the time VLC crashed, it felt like probably 50% knew it was a joke and 50% didn't. So it got this really weird mix of laughs and sad groans. By the end, most people were laughing and it got huge applause. But then after the screening, at least five people came up to me and said, too bad, man, they fucked up your movie. <laughs> Which, to me... That's a success. Uh, that's, that's exactly what I was hoping for. Yeah. It's everything I was hoping for. So I said, fucking classic. We definitely need to send it to some other festivals. It seriously played so fucking well. And the feeling was that it was like, just like, yeah, that's a perfect movie in the room. It's fun. If you, you know, whatever. Um, uh, and then you responded, ha ha, dang, it's funny how into the butt stuff they were. <laughs> um, <laughs> there you go. Uh, so then I, I don't have a screenshot of this. I, I deleted it. But so then that night, I'm feeling so happy. And so I, t <laughs> I tweeted... And, and like I said in the earlier things, it was like, I was really keyed to be extending this joke in every direction. So I tweeted saying, like, thanks to CineFamily for screening it. What a great night. Too bad the projector uh, had some problems. Yeah. Uh, you know, maybe we can screen it again somewhere else. Uh, and I tagged CineFamily in the account, in the tweet. Yeah. Um, which, in hindsight isn't a good joke because it's an inside joke. If someone from the outside is looking, it's looking like I'm uh, disparaging. Right, like they, they fucked family. it up or something, right? Yeah, like, oh, they've got, like, it, like you wouldn't be able to tell that this is a joke. Yeah. Uh, which was not my intention. Honestly, I just wasn't even thinking about it. Yeah. Um, and that, you know, whatever, uh, or whatever, or, or I thought they're going to keep the joke going too, whatever. But I realize now that, yeah, it's like, okay, whatever. Uh, and so the next day, because it's a it's a weekend festival, so the next day I go, and I'm confronted by uh, uh, some of the some of the organizers, mm -hmm. and I my memory is that I was told specifically that the owner of the theater, who has now been me tooed into oblivion, and the Cine Family is shut down. Wait, so this ha that happened then, or are you just talking about no. since then? Oh no, since then. Yeah. So I I feel like part of part of like talking about this whole thing is that it's like. The, the person who was related to me was most upset with me is uh, a real scumbag. Yes. You know, oh, yeah. allegedly, allegedly. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, and Cine family is no more. And so I feel like who cares? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's all in the past. Uh, so, so I got confronted by people who said that, that they were mad and was told that was a bad look, unprofessional, blah, blah, blah. And I yeah. felt, I felt terrible. I felt really bad. Um, I was really panicking when I was at the screening that night. I was just like in a cold sweat, just feeling awful. Cause you know, it's the last thing, this is such a stupid joke. Yeah. The last thing I would want to do is, is upset anyone. Yeah. Uh, and so I deleted the tweets and I, and I, <laughs> uh, I, I wrote an email, uh, that night and I have part of the email to read <laughs> for full transparency. <laughs> is it good to read this? Nice. I mean, yeah. Read this it. Part of the, that I said, I just wanted to, uh, so I wrote to one of the organizers. Because I don't think I, I ever heard it. I don't think okay. I've ever heard this. Okay, so, so this I'm... is Charles here. I think I actually didn't even tell you this story for like a Yeah, year after I didn't it know for a while, yeah, that it went sour, that like the some of the people at the Cine family were unhappy with yeah. what you did. I have a very, I think, a, a, a guilty conscience in this way too, where I just really don't like people being mad at me. And I like yeah. want to make things right. Yeah, uh, of course. I think. So, so, uh, uh, so I said, I just wanted to write that I'm seriously sorry about the posts I made about free for all. I've deleted them already, but just wanted to write to make sure there's no bad blood. I was just trying to make a joke, extrapolating out the joke of the movie. The joke has also expanded to a Vimeo link that never works and press page that has a bunch of broken <laughs> images. It's super obvious to me now that it was in poor taste. And I honestly did not mean to disparage animation wow. breakdown or cine family. Um, and it went on, but the rest is, is more personal. So yeah. whatever. So And the point still stands, you know, that it's like I'm always on the side of people organizing yeah. uh, events and creating communities. So so uh, so then uh, the movie really died. It, I think it was just I really was like, oh, I'm going to submit this to Ottawa. It's going to yeah. be in all these places. It's going to just bring the house down everywhere. And we're going to look like these cool, like kind of rock star animators who are saying, fuck you to the system. <laughs> and then it just it died. 
after that night. And, From the uh, bad I experience, I just never wanted to. Really yeah, and I thought, oh, if I, if I ever screen this again, it's going to piss off whoever the organizers yeah. are, the projectionists. It's going to feel personal. It's going to feel like, oh, you know, when it's not personal at all. I mean, you know, I went to Annecy and they had the exact same projector problems. Yeah, you know, which so is so weird it, to me because you know, just re-looking at the uh, reaction video that you filmed, like, it seemed like most people had a good time, you know, watching it, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you didn't, I mean, yeah, but I, I guess to me, if I thought, what if someone went up to the projectionist afterwards and said something like, Hey, you're, you're not a good projectionist, you know, oh, sure. But there's maybe a line there that's, 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 that's tricky. Uh, but I don't know. But like Whatever. we said earlier, that guy had problems. So, <laughs> well, the theater owner. Yeah. But the, but the person who's working the project, the, the projector, it's like, you know, uh, is a, is a consummate professional. That, sure. That's, that's not really what the joke is about, obviously, yeah. but, but the idea that it like does that person feel like man fuck these guys and fuck this movie, <laughs> um, you know these kinds of thoughts were were swelling up and I was like okay I don't want to I don't want to yeah burn any bridges or upset anyone or blah 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 so the movie just died right there and it in its tracks and uh, was never shown again yeah buried for six years buried for six years until tonight <laughs> <laughs> um so that's the whole story. <laughs> <laughs> What no, do you I feel like this ended on a sour note. So. <laughs> what do you think, um, chat? Yeah, so if anyone, I mean, um, I guess we can, why don't we show it again now, and then we can just, we can we can uh, keep it open and just go back to chit-chatting, but the sort of, of the, the official event will be over. Okay, that sounds good. So yeah, okay, we'll, so. we're going to show the film again for anyone who didn't catch it. It's about two minutes and some seconds long. Um, and then afterwards, we will return just to chat, I guess. Just until we just have this be an, op an open chat. Yeah, yeah, until we feel like stopping, I guess. Okay, here's the uh, film again. I'm going to mute us now. Okay, we're back. Okay, so one thing that we didn't talk about that watching it again, I want to talk about that that there's another joke, there's another dimension to this movie mm -hmm. that... that there is actually kind of a real movie in, in told in three or four different discrete scenes. Yeah. And that was all you. Yeah. I don't even think we talked about what that was. So maybe you could talk right. a little bit yeah, about it. Yeah, no. <laughs> well, the general, the general, <laughs> <laughs> the general. Yeah. I don't really, well, okay. So like, I kind of know, but I also don't really know, but I can tell you at the time. Cause you were so fucked up the whole time. You were <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no, just like, I think at the time, I was super into just like character design surrealism. So my, my, uh, you know, I was making something like this. I was more leaning in towards like, because I hated it so much, you know, like we actually did like legit kind of like resent sort of like this kind of, Film. probably more you than me because i feel yeah. like it's like there's so, an there was an element of your work at the time that like like maybe shared a little bit more of a border with the kind of bright cartoony sensibility yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so it, w it was hard for me to sort of like lean in a hundred percent you know i feel like if we were to do this again today i would have leaned in way more and done less of like a weird cartoon story and more just like well, yeah, yeah, actually do like an actual way, way, way more, you know, instead of like this little surreal thing with a general and like a sentient, sentient You would have worked butt. out the plot of the movie that you don't get to see a little bit more thoroughly. Or just like make it more bootylicious or something, you know, like sure. this is like, sure. yeah, it's like a lot of this has to do with this weird angry general. Like what, what is that about? Like, this, like if your theme is butt, you yeah. could have gone way, way more in a butt direction. Exactly. Yeah. But I think... Yeah, but like at the time, there was something that was just sort of preventing me from going all in on the concept, you know. Um, so like wow. as far as story goes, I think it was just like, yeah, there's this weird general. He's sort of taking over the world because he just wants ass everywhere, you know. And eventually, <laughs> you know, just like every story, it gets the better of him, you know. His ambitions grow too large. And yeah. like Frankenstein, the monster, it... Uh, grows out of his he's, control and sort of like he's icarus of butts <laughs> exactly he he's flew the icarus close, of ass yeah he flew, <laughs> flew too close to the to the ass on that one <laughs> to the ass god um <laughs> it's the oldest then, uh, story in the book yeah and then he's shooting butts that attach to people but then it's also like within his butt cannon he's engineering like the ultimate mega butt yeah but it becomes so powerful that it explodes and kills him yeah killed by the thing he loves yeah that's beautiful 
It's, a... <laughs> it's Shakespearean in a lot of ways. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, which to me, I like. I mean, that part of it to me made it like made me feel like this is actually funny. Mm -hmm. um, or you know, just added like one final dimension to there is an actual movie in there, you know? Mm -hmm. um, uh, but yeah, so I, feel like I think like that's you're right. Immature, oh, go on. It needed some kind of thread to sort of like help trick people into thinking like I'm missing out on a film that I wanted to see. <laughs> Underneath there is a two and a half minute butt movie that you can, but in a way it's like the butt, the real nothing but butts is the nothing but butts that you create in your own head. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Having watched the little bits, so... In a way, it's almost a, a sort of a metaphysical critique of filmmaking itself. Damn. So, <laughs> uh, genius grant, please. Um, so, uh, I guess that's that's sort of the end of the story. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm, I'm sure there are no questions because we just talked about this <laughs> two minute movie for, for, for an hour and a an half. Hour. So, uh, so I'm positive that no one has any questions because I think we thoroughly, thoroughly drove it into the ground. Yes. All the um, context you could ever need. There it is. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, the real butts are the friends we made along the way, or in my case, the enemies I made along the way. <laughs> uh, 